a warm welcome everybody to the virtual summit and uh, definitely excited to to do this session we had a fantastic um, on premise summit and who, those of you who couldn't make it i'm happy that you can either make it to this virtual session or listen to the recording so let's get started so some of the disclaimers some of this information may be obsolete by the time you see the recording or access the system because we have actually a product that changes very quickly and also sometimes we may share some visionary information feel free to uh, tweet spread the word or in your linkedin networks by using the hashtag el summit so let's see what is the what's the project in the first place before we see how to make a project successful let's start by understanding what a project is and what is project management so project management in this definition is in a way to to have structure around a complex endeavor and also dealing with multiple problems at the same time especially revolving around time cost resources and behavior and i'll say sap cloud dlm is able to address all these aspects and we'll see that shortly how and why projects fail in the first place so projects fail because the scope keeps changing why there is always a firefighting why there is a sense of panic in project team because you don't have a stable foundation if the scope is changing then how can you deliver predictability how can you deliver a timeline that you committed right and which also leads to these communication issues blame games all those things improper planning you know it's really like planning to fail is failing to plan and both are actually the same so so really this is one of the main problems then there is typically a zoo of tools and every tool claims to be the single source of truth but the the, the consultant or the the poor consumer is left with really managing all these tools connections and spread reporting and even offline spreadsheets that makes it really hard also within the project different teams can have different approaches some teams can work in predictable fashion and some teams can work in agile fashion which makes the job of project lead really hard and also is a reactive approach that means not getting on top of but waiting for things to fail and then starting adjusting and that's really quite dangerous to do how it should be i mean the the project actually should be a perfect symphony in which everybody does the role and then you really in a way enjoy the performance so how can we really change this this radically how can we change the situation from being always a, a dramatic panic and reactive situation to a peaceful planned and meticulous performance and this is where sap cloud llm helped you what are the key hints that i can give you how to run successful projects and this is coming from different sources so we work very closely with sap activate team and we get a real project from the ground we also work with a lot of uh, customer support advocates and field personals and consultants so this is from different sources you know the whole idea is you should be focusing on the implementation itself and not on alm tools alm tools should make your job easy and not hard right and also why reinvent the wheel why don't you you start by knowing something that you already know and establish timelines and tracking mechanism it's that means don't just plan but also track against that plan are you doing according to the plan or do you want to take corrective action as proactively as possible also there should be a, a, a very formal setup and responsibility structure so that everybody exactly knows what to do when to do you should talk to management about the reporting needs up front and then have it transparent and as much as possible online not offline also get stakeholders agreement on cross project timelines and this is also really important because the project leads have to realize that they contribute to a larger purpose and uh, this is where it's not just one initiative but multiple parallel initiatives that are running and all have to be managed and the last but in a way is really very important is devops that means ensuring that there is really in a way one central holistic view of the entire problem and not breaking that into silos and also having a continuous and incremental delivery 
So let's see how SAP Cloud LM helps in these at a technical level. So say focus on the implementation and not on tools is use pre-configured scenarios. So this is a tool that uh, runs out of the box and you really don't need any configuration right from the first instant. So you request a tenant, you get it in as little as 15 to 20 minutes, and then you can start using it without any configuration. That's the, that's the beauty. That means you really focus on the business problem and not on the technology setup, implementation, or doing some hundreds of custom settings or configuration schemas. None of that is required. It just works, right? And I say, don't reinvent the wheel means use the guidance and methodology provided by Activate working with thousands of customers. So we have rich content coming from two main sources, SAP Activate content for the task, and then um, the Enterprise Architecture Reference Library, uh, all for the process part. So that means you really have a fantastic starting point from SAP, and you get exactly what you need to, to use that as a foundation, or we also call them accelerators. So you really get a head start and you don't have to create all this content from scratch. And we'll, we'll see shortly in the project, we have a mechanism to set up time boxes and a responsibility structure called teams. All of this will actually see in the system itself. And we'll also see how you can work with a lot of flexibility. How can you even create your own way to represent things or manage things such as uh, custom work streams, tags and things like that. How can cross-project coordination happen? This is something via deployment plan. And this is also something that we'll see shortly in system. And how to implement continuous delivery is by breaking requirements into very small pieces called user stories, which can fit nicely into a sprint, which we also call as time box, and then have features which can be deployed on demand. So, so there are some of the hints that you can use to run projects successfully. And now let's gradually get into the details. So SAP Cloud ALM comes pre-configured, but what are the building blocks in SAP Cloud ALM? So on the right side, you see these building blocks. So project management, release management, requirement management, and this list by design is an unordered list. So this is, what does it mean? This means that you can use individual capabilities. It's, it's your wish. So let's say today you can say, you know, I have everything set, but I'm missing a tool that brings my manual testing and automation testing together. And that's all what I need. That's really fine. The tool is by designed to support you in both scenarios. Means you can use individual components or you can use the end-to-end -end value proposition. Both scenarios are possible. Also, an kind of a transition path is possible. Let's say today you can say, I'm going to start with my fit to standard workshops and my process management and collection of requirements. Rest I'll figure out later. Okay, and when the team is mature or when you have kind of uh, experienced the tool, then you may want to expand the footprint into deployment management, uh, landscape management and change management. So, so really it's up to you to decide what is your style of working. Do you want to solve end-to-end -end problems together or do you want to break into individual pieces and have kind of expert-driven implementation in which each topic area wants to lead the topic by the different working style? But this is supported nicely. Also from day one, the, the project management creates a, a task list and that comes distributed with roles. So that also in a way reduces your time for figuring out what to do, when to do, and who should do what. So all of that is already pre-thought for you because we kind of convert the activate methodology guidance into a task list, which simplifies the whole thing. Okay, so enough of technology. What if we take a short break and go into some storytelling? Okay, so, so really it's like maybe there is a land, do something today and there is a project lead, you know, on a shining armor on a horse trying to conquer the battles of scopes and scope creeps and cost overruns, right? And then he realizes he can't do it alone. So he needs a team. So what I'm trying to say here is it's a lot of details and it's kind of hard to grasp, but we have tried to simplify it. 
there is a blog post that I call the end-to-end -end blog post. And here you can scan your phone and this QR code and you'll be taken to the blog post. And once you get the presentation, then you'll get a link and I'll quickly open it so you know what I'm talking about. So, so this is a blog post in which it tells you how to manage an implementation end to end. What are the different steps and also what is the right sequence? So here, this is really important to even know the sequence in which to do things. So I'm just going to paste the link in the chat as we speak so you can even access it right now. And this is the story. And this is the sequence. So you start by requesting SAP Cloud LM. I mean, we don't have to go through this right now. The whole idea is you have this link, read it at your own. And the best part is it is cross-linked to all other information, such as sometimes we have application help, which is fantastic. And sometimes we even have uh, links to other resources, such as expert portal. And uh, that is also another fantastic resource. To, to help you in a structured manner understand end-to-end -end fashion with best practices, with lots and lots of information. And so, so all these links are really important for you to know and have them handy. And uh, this is, so I'm going to put that in the chat. So I have put the link to the chat for the expert portal. And I'm going to also put the link to the, the blog post. So these are some of the resources, right? But, and there are many, but I think they, they are in a way cross-linked so you can find your way easily once you have this. Okay, so we talked about the story and let's talk about characters in the story. I mean, no story is powerful if they don't have good characters. And also it's not the individual characters, but how they interact with each other that makes the story powerful. And this is also a central theme of running a project successfully. So as an example, if there is a change manager who has to approve a feature request, then the feature request is not created from thin air, but from a user story, which came from a requirement. And that requirement came from a business process, which was scoped in a fit to standard workshop. So it's all connected. It's all connected end to end. And for, for this reason, we also ship a lot of predefined traceability reports, which I'm also going to show in the system shortly, but that's the idea. That means it's one seamless flow in which information flows from different personas and then the information is handed over nicely. As an example, if a test coordinator is creating a test case, then this test case is assigned to a requirement which is attached to a process and then a business process expert can use a view called solution process traceability and see end to end. That means this is what I started with the process and it was broken into five requirements. Those requirements were broken down into 20 user stories and 19 of them were tested. One is pending. As soon as that user story is tested, then I'll do my user acceptance testing and I'll be done. So, so this is where it's really important. It's a flow. It's a predefined flow which just works. Okay, and now let's go into more details and shortly we'll also go into the system. So what's a project? So project you can think of as a container that holds information together. And what is the information? First of all is methodology. So as I mentioned briefly before, in SAP Cloud LM, what we have done is we have taken the Activate methodology and preloaded that. And we call that a template. So when you start a project, the first thing you do is select a template. And what are those examples? So you can have a template for, as an example, s Cloud Tree System Landscape Implementation or even on-premise. So, so really it even supports on-premise roadmaps and also not just SAP s but also Ariba, SuccessFactor. So there are a lot of other products that are already now available with SAP Cloud LM for the methodology part. Then you start by defining timelines. And here also we have really our unique strengths. In SAP Cloud LM, you can choose your working style. You can work in a waterfall fashion or an agile fashion or even a hybrid fashion. Means within the same project, one team can decide that I'm going to use only phases and that's sufficient for me because I have really building blocks and the other team can say no, but I work in two weekly sprints and it, the tool will support it. The tool will allow you to have sprints as optional things. 
and things will not break if you don't use them. But if you use them, then you will get some nice capabilities and additional reports. Okay. Then we have teams. We have one team called the PMO team that is created by default, but you can easily extend the definition. You can create as many teams as you want. Each team has a certain set of roles which are predefined again from SAP Activate methodology, but you can extend the definition easily by adding custom roles. So this flexibility is also a very powerful in a way capability in SAP Cloud LM. As an example for methodology, we give you the phases provided by SAP Activate, such as prepare, explore, realize, and so on. But what if you want to have a custom phase, like a hypercare phase or a cutover phase or a post implementation support phase? So you can easily do that by adding custom phases. So, so, so flexibility is also built in the tool. Okay, and then as a project lead, you at the end of the day want to take something live. And what do you want? What are you responsible for? That is your scope. So scope is a container which manages your business processes. And here scope actually consists of solution scenarios and solution scenarios in turn contain solution processes. And then going forward, once you have those processes which are scripted by the experts from SAP, they give you a fantastic visual starting point. That means you don't need to worry about, first of all, finding accurate information. Everything is done online. And in context of a business process, you directly create requirements, which are basically, you can say, gaps or things that you still miss. You can optionally break those requirements into user stories. It's not a must. Okay, so it really depends on your working style. And feature is a special entity for deployment use case. Feature is the one that takes you and holds your hand to production. And I know there are a lot of details and all of them are mentioned in the blog post that I mentioned earlier. And also there is uh, some more links. So there is another blog post called what is what and I'm going to show that shortly. Then there are tasks and subtasks. So task management is kind of the core engine that makes everything working. So that means as a project lead, you really have a lot of tasks and some tasks can be non software related. As an example, you may want to order a, a you know, physical server, or you may want to even do some office equipment or move. So there could be a lot of administration tasks and also subtasks that are needed anytime. You can also maybe want to set an alignment meeting between two people. So all that is called project tasks, and they also nicely fit into a hierarchy. And what is the hierarchy? It's a very simple hierarchy. We have phases at the top, then we have deliverables, then we have tasks and subtasks. Deliverable is a collection of tasks and the project lead then has simplified thinking because they don't have time and capacity to look at individual task level. They just monitor to set up deliverables and then they are done. Okay. Then there are test cases and defects that also are very important and everything fits nicely together. So you don't have to worry about how to keep things together because that's done for you. And I'm going to show that shortly. And the last piece, reporting and analytics, exactly which keeps all of this together. Okay. So now let's get into this picture and really spend some time here because maybe this is the only slide you need to understand to, to really become an expert. In the box, whatever you have is within a project. Outside the box, you have some cross project entities. And then each persona has a different role to play. So let's talk about the cross project entities first and who are the main personas there. One of them is system administrator. When you want to use a system, then obviously multiple projects are going to make use of it. And this is also a very important point for you to know. SAP Cloud LM is not just a collection of record. It's an active system that helps you navigate to the specific system in the specific UI. And that's definitely quite powerful and valuable because then as a consultant or a business process expert, you are not worried about finding the right tin and finding the right URL because everything is there. You just have to click seamlessly and boom, you are in the right system. Then the landscape assignments. So which system or even we have an entity called system groups. So which system groups are going to be used in which projects? All of that is kind of a cross project relationships that is managed outside the project. 
Then we have tags. Tags are somewhere interesting. So tags are created in context of a project, but then are available for all other projects to use. And the whole idea of tag is you can give it whatever value you want. And you can then assign tags to a lot of entities in a harmonious way, such as you can assign the same tag to a requirement, feature, test case, and things like that. And then you can have tag-based traceability. So you can maybe define a tag called plant Berlin. And then you have a very kind of a cross-object view to look at that. Where is my plant Berlin? Rather than thinking, where is my requirement for plant Berlin? And where is my user story? You just navigate via tag reporting. Then we have this uh, work stream. Work stream is in a way a functional area within a project as an example, analytics or configuration or design, project management. So all these are logical work streams. And also for, for flexibility reasons, you can create your own work streams because as a customer or as a partner, you really want to model how you work. So SAP gives you a starting point, but doesn't block you from innovation. And work streams are also close to tags in some reasons, because work streams are also in a way extended in a project context via an Excel upload, but then become available for all the projects to use. So it's kind of a central list. Then we have this release and deployment plan. So what is a, a release? So release is a timeline which cuts across projects. So, so imagine that you have three different countries and kind of rolling out functionality at different times, but sharing the same landscape. And then that makes it hard because each country project lead can define nicely the realized phase whenever they want. But if there is an upgrade coming, then all of them are going to be impacted. So that means you need a timeline, which is a global timeline outside of your project. And that is the release timeline. And that's why it's a cross project entity. and to make it simple, what we have done is we have combined the release and landscape into a larger bracket and called it a deployment plan. Because at the end of the day, when you want to plan your deployments, for planning of deployments, two things are required. Whenever you want to plan deployments, you need the landscape where the deployments are going to happen and you need the timeline. And both of them come together in this deployment plan. So deployment plan at the end of the day contains a release schedule and a landscape assignment. And once you assign a deployment plan to the project, then the project suddenly is aware of the landscape. Okay. Now we have discussed all cross project entities. Now let's discuss what's in a project. In a project, as I mentioned earlier, there are these timelines called phases. You can optionally define sprints. Sprints are aligned to one of the phases. You can also define milestones. Milestones are also aligned to the phases. Then you can create one to n teams. So you can, as an example, create a compliance team, an audit team, a security team, testing team. Really, you can give any semantics you want. Each team will have a nice uh, role definition and you can add custom roles, as I mentioned earlier. Then you have these scopes. So scope is a larger bracket and how you slice your scopes is also up to you. It depends on your organizational policies. At the end of the day, scope is just a collection of processes. And then the processes, once you have the, these fit to standard workshops, which are basically sessions in which you go through the SAP delivered BPM and content and see if the standard process delivered by the SAP fits your needs or not. Then you end up with certain requirements. Then when you proceed, then you have an option. You can break the requirements into smaller units called user stories. Typically what you do is you assign the requirement to a release, which is the larger time slice. But the smaller user stories are typically assigned to a sprint. These are just suggestions. You can really model as you want. Cloud LM gives you a lot of flexibility as an example, you can model overlapping sprints. You can model overlapping phases. You can model overlapping releases. We have done that because of the feedback from ground that sometimes situations in the projects are complex. That means maybe sprint one is used by team one and sprint two is used by team two, and they have kind of a different calendar week definition, so they have a slight overlap. So, so we have really made the tool very flexible and easy to use. 
But then when we have also nice reporting in which you see that easily, that means if you've done it by mistake, you will see it visually and then you can fix it immediately. OK, then we talked about test cases and also defects. So test cases can be assigned easily to requirements and user stories, and then they can have defects in the context of a requirement. We also have defect traceability and test execution reporting that will easily tell you where you are in which stage in the project. OK, and we also discussed features, which is the deployment vehicle that takes functionality to production. So the simplest use case of a feature could be a bug fix in which you just create a feature, send it to production. The more elaborate could be you have multiple user stories and they have logically together. Maybe you want to club them together for avoiding sequence issues. So you combine different user stories together, assign them to feature and send it to production. OK. And the so side we have also feature traceability, which gives you an end to end view on where are your features. So in a way, this is everything and this is and why it's important to know because everything has to work together in harmony. Going back to the orchestra example in which really you want to have the symphony. You want to have this handover, seamless handover with information sharing with different personas doing their part, sharing information and making it work. And that's what makes a project successful. OK, then I'm going to spend some time in the system so that you don't think it's a completely theoretical. OK. So I'm logged on to the system and uh, in case you are completely new to SAP Cloud LM, that's also fine. I mean, really we'll start slowly, start from scratch. When you log on to the first time, you enter the screen, which we call as Launchpad. Then the administrator has to actually go and uh, do some things such as user management in which you set the users. You give them something called, uh, we call them authorization roles. So maybe let's see quickly so the the users can can be if i want to add a user then i can, i have to give a unique id or an email address but mainly i have to give use case based authorization so is this person a project lead a project member or things like that okay and then once my user uh, management is done, then I also have to do some some landscape management. I have to make sure the data is automatically freshed. All the cloud systems have uh, services which actually bring the landscape uh, already. And in some cases for on-premise systems, there are agents that need to run, which then send this information to SAP Cloud LM in a seamless manner. Once the system is available in this landscape management area, then an administrator can then proceed towards setup and start creating system groups. So this is also what I'm going to sh show very quickly. So system group is just a collection of systems. So as an example, here I have a system group called Aswana Cloud. System group is restricted only to one product. That is really important to know but then it can have multiple tenants and these tenants we refer as systems so that means we'll say that in the quality assurance role i have two systems so we use the term systems and tenants interchangeably in some of the uis but you just need to know they are the same for practical purposes and a collection of systems is called a system group but please note these are not transport routes as of now it's really a collection then you can have many of these system groups. You can, for the same product, also create multiple system groups. Maybe you have something called mainline and something called project line, so you can model that easily using system groups. Then how do you combine these system groups? You use deployment plan. So here I have an example in which there is a deployment plan which has nicely marked uh, upgrade deployment or non-deployment window. I can use a different example in which my deployment plan is more conventional, in which I have quarterly planning of my releases. And here what I have done is I have assigned system groups to my deployment plan. And I have assigned my deployment plan to my project. 
Okay, so this is kind of really the meta work that needs to happen before real work is started. So before even in this case, a project already exists, but many times the deployment plan can be created before a project exists in preparation to future projects that will be triggered. And now let's look at how a project looks like. So a project has certain set of information in a again, nice flow. So you start by first of all selecting a template. And this is the list of templates that we get from SAP Activate. This list is continuously enhanced. If you want to know more, then you can click. And if you click here, then you'll go to a tool called Roadmap Viewer, which is a view only environment. So Roadmap Viewer is, is also a nice tool. It has been there for quite some time. Only you need to remember it's view only. You cannot track your status. You can't do role assignments and you don't have all this pre-built reporting that you get with SAP Cloud LM. Then as a project lead, it's also very important to know the access level. So this is also something new that we introduced. So you can have three options. Access level public is within the tenant or the users which have at least a project member authorization, they can edit the project. I don't have to assign them explicitly. So it's a more trust-based, free collaboration-based environment. If you choose it to restricted, which is the default setting, this means only the people which I explicitly assigned to at least one role in Teams, they can edit it. Others can just view it, but not edit it. So it's more restricted. Whereas the private setting is typically in confidential project or data sensitive situations in which you say only the people who are explicitly assigned as members can view or edit. Others will not be even aware. Others will not even see the project name because even the name can be confidential. Then we have these integration scenarios. Right now we have just one. So if you're using SAP Central Business Configuration, then you can connect this also to your SAP Cloud LM project. What will happen is then project activities from SAP Central Business Configuration will appear as tasks on SAP Cloud LM side, and you will seamlessly see one list. One thing that you should remember is when you get tasks from CBC, then they are read only in SAP Cloud LM because the whole idea is these project activities are managed on central business configuration side and Cloud LM just gets the status in a read only format. Then we get to the time boxes. So here I explained you have kind of a three uh, things together in a time box concept. You have phases which can have start and end dates. You can create the custom phases which show with the icon and then you can have these sprints as optional, which nicely align to the phases because we look at the time of the sprint and automatically match with the phase. We do the same thing for milestone. When you maintain a date, we automatically match the matching phase to help you in your reporting and filtering. Then we have the teams. You can have as many teams as you want. Each team has this role list. If you think the role list is too much, you can easily deactivate some of the roles that will make it slightly simpler for you and have kind of a focus. And if you think it's too less, then you can add your custom roles. So that is also very easy. Then let's go to the scopes. So scope, as I mentioned, is a collection of uh, processes. So let's see how does scope look like. So I have a scope. Let me actually start by creating a new scope. So when I create a, a new scope, then I get this list of solution scenarios. And these are content packages that are provided by uh, Earl. So this is the, the library for processes in which I can then select any solution scenario package and then make that content available for my project. And once I select these solution scenarios, then I have to go to the subsequent step, which we say scoping, in which I basically even add processes in my scope. So means you are then very, very specific so that your business experts, they are not overwhelmed by a long list of, let's say, 849 processes in this case, 
but they actually see a short list of five or six processes. So they can really focus that this is what I'm supposed to evaluate. This is what I'm going to track, right? And then let's see how a process looks like. So the, the process actually has this nice uh, VPMN diagrams. And so the, the whole idea is everything is nicely connected and runs like a, a nice flow. So whenever you are going through these workshops, you're not using any Excel sheets. And if you find a gap, then you create a requirement in context of a business process. So that's the nice flow, which is also explained in the blog post. Okay, then let's go back to the project. Then we saw the, the scope and how does it look like? Then the last thing is the deployment landscape. And here, the only thing which is kind of a fine print, the assignment of a deployment plan to a project is called deployment landscape because this is the landscape ultimately which this project is going to use. And where this landscape is used is an example URL redirect. When you get some active SAP activate tasks, then they are automatically mapped to some of the, the roles. As an example, you'll have an activate task that go to SAP S4 HANA quality system. Then how, the, how does the project know which quality system specifically or which tenant is the project looks at the system group. Then in the system group, the project finds in this case two and literally when you want to navigate to a task, you'll get you'll get a question, which one? But then at least your search is narrowed down to two specific tenants and you don't have to worry about figuring this out as a business expert or as a BZ consultant because all of that work has been pre-thought and pre-configured for you. Okay. Now, after finishing the whole project setup, I'll also quickly show you how a task list looks like. And so task list has two main views, the list view and the Gantt chart view. And it's, it's a very, very simple way to consume information. You have very strong filters at the top and many of them are hidden. You can even enable them by combining these filters. Uh, what I definitely recommend you to take special note is something called views. As an example, if you want to enhance the filter criteria by an attribute, it will be done. Now I suddenly see the approval field, but I see an asterisk here, and this will not be saved until I click here and I say save as a new view. And this is very important so that you are efficient and you may actually want to increase or even decrease the list of filters. So I highly recommend you create your own views and that's, this is where you'll get optimal experience. And this view concept also applies to the column settings below. As an example, you may see, you know what, I, I really want to see approval in my list also. So you can do that and then you see again the asterisk here because you have changed it and then you have to save. And the next time you open the task list, you'll have your specific view. And what you, you can also do is actually set this view as a tile. So you say, you know what? I'm going to use this so many times that put it on my launch pad. And then this is even more efficient. Then you have your specific tile with your specific view, with your specific filter criteria. And especially if you have multiple projects, then maybe it makes sense to have one tile per project as a starting point and you save a lot of time because you don't have to do all these things again and again. Okay. And maybe the last thing before we get into Q&A is the reporting. So there are two main reports that I want to show you. One is this overview page, which is delivered by default and uh, information is shown in terms of cards and the cards are nicely in a way already sorted by different capabilities such as requirement management, task management, test management. So lots and lots of details. And if you think this is too much, then you can go to this manage cards, you can deactivate them. And the same principle of view even apply here in the overview page. So that means you can, you can even change the order of cards. That is a very new development that we have done in which you then really set a very maybe lean view 
and then save it as your view, set it as default, and then really that's great. Also, please take a note of these additional filters, such as the work stream filter, time box filter, or team filter. And with the combination of this view and these filters, you can really cut down your information extraction time significantly. Then the second kind of reporting which I want to show is uh, the analytics. So here we have a lot of predefined analytics reports. So, and these are the traceability reports which I mentioned multiple times, especially the solution process traceability, because we really encourage that you have more a business process based thinking in which the business expert just scopes some processes and then tracks those processes to execution. But this is just one way to think of it. Business experts love it, but then there are other people who want to, in a way, do it differently. So as an example, you want to have a feature traceability, and then that's a different view. So let's look at the feature traceability in which you see my focus is where are the different features in different stages. And here also we have some additional filters as we discussed this release entity. So you may actually want to see where they are. So, you know, in which release are which features or which work stream is having which features. So really you can do, do a lot here. And especially even there is a new testing status which was introduced in features. So this is a different persona as a release and deployment manager. Maybe this view is what you need. So what I want to say is there are too many flexible options, but they are all pre-configured. You don't have to worry on how these reports work. They just work automatically as you proceed with your work and they give you the critical information that you need, especially things like burn up chart. If you use story points, then you may find it really interesting, task trends or progress reporting. So progress reporting view gives you these two alternative views in which you can see the progress by phases or by sprints or what I also mentioned as deliverables. That means the project lead may actually just say, you know what, give me a condensed view just on deliverables because that's all I can consume. Okay, so that's what I wanted to cover in this uh, session. And uh, maybe one last thing which I can share is this link to something which I call as master blog post. So this is also something which kind of keeps it together from a, a blog post perspective. So there it's in addition to the expert portal that we that we saw earlier. So the expert portal is uh, kind of more visual, visually appealing, and which has um, even these best practices. And uh, master blog post is like community driven. Even you can create a blog post. And if you have a fantastic blog post, you can reach out to us and we will cross link it here. This is more community driven content in which people just come up and they, they, they create nice things. And we try to make it very, very relevant for you. And this post has all the links, especially one of the link, which is my favorite is this YouTube playlist. So what's new? Since we deliver every two weeks, it's really important to stay tuned on what's happening because many times you may be waiting for a feature that we just made productive and we try to create a video for that quickly. And this is where the YouTube playlist comes very handy. And also for any capability, then we have like a landing page. For example, for change and deployment management also, there is a quite um, interesting and comprehensive blog post that gives you lots and lots of details because this is always a topic of interest.